Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar hosted by Organization Development and Change Workforce Education and Development Program at Penn State. This is a monthly webinar series presented during your lunch hour. My name is Yuling Zhang and I am a PhD candidate in Workforce Education and Development Program. We also have Sakun Giri, who is the moderator for Q&A session. Today, we are going to presenting, leading a team to accomplish their goal presented by Dr. Joey Flack. In terms of the interactive format for this webinar, please use the chat feature in the Zoom platform. If you have any questions about the presentation, please use the Q&A feature on Zoom. You can see the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. The Q&A session will be at the end of the presentation. Our online Master of Professional Studies in Organization Development and Change are designed for professionals who need the skills and knowledge to effectively lead change in their organization. Furthermore, there is a PhD program in Workforce Education and Development with a concentration in human resource development and organization development. Our program has created a continuous monthly webinar series with experts around the world. Today, our presenter is Dr. Joy Flagg. Dr. Flagg is an assistant teaching professor of education and coordinator of the competency-based teaching education program at Penn State University. He consults, teaches, and conducts research in the areas of leadership development and career and technical teacher education. Now, please join me welcoming our speaker, Dr. Fleck. The floor is yours. Thank you and uh, welcome everyone to uh, this uh, webinar on leading a team to accomplish uh, their goal. Uh, my background again is in career and technical education, leadership development, and uh, I've uh, been a uh, CTE teacher as well as an administrator and provide leadership in a variety of uh, volunteer and faith-based organizations. Uh, so welcome, uh, glad to have you uh, join uh, with me in this webinar. And uh, let's, let's get started. Leading a team to accomplish their goal. Uh, so I wanna ask you, and if you would, uh, if you wouldn't mind put it, just putting it in, in, in chat, when you uh, think about leading a team and you reflect on that, uh, what, do you think, what do you think of when it comes to team leadership? So if you wouldn't mind just uh, posting that in the chat box. Thank you, empowerment, confidence. How do you get buy-in from everyone on the team? Very good question. Uh, being able to help guide a team to uh, accomplish its goals. And of course, that's our focus. Uh, keeping the team engaged. Uh, yeah, a very good question. Sometimes that can be difficult. Uh, Okay, well, thank you for, for sharing that. If you have uh, others and, and want to continue to, to uh, post in chat, please feel free to do so. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, one of the quotes that, uh, that comes uh, to us from Charles Dickens, uh, and I think of in terms of team leadership, is it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And I don't know how many of you ever felt this way, but uh, teamwork can often be a good experience. But sometimes in, we, in working in teams, it can be a real challenge. And, and sometimes the experience is not as good as, as we would like it, either from the side of the, uh, of the team leader or the, the team participants. Uh, uh, so today I want, want to focus uh, on uh, just uh, looking at the team leader's role and ways that a, a team leader can help the team to accomplish the goal and ways that also that everyone on the team can have a good experience together. Because I think it, it's not just the accomplishment of the goal, but it, when we work with a team to, to be able to have a good experience uh, with that team work is essential. Uh, 
So again, uh, in, in, in the chat, if you wouldn't mind helping me out, what uh, team or what teams do you lead or what teams uh, will you be, uh, do you anticipate you'll be leading uh, in the future? So what, what, what's the focus of the teamwork that, uh, that uh, you do? And if you wouldn't mind just posting that in the chat, chat that would be very helpful to me. Teams that focus on projects. Teams with a focus on process improvement. Thank you. New teams that uh, develop to create online uh, learning modules. Teams in education, teams in healthcare, teams in food supply. Thank you. Professional development teams. Thank you, teams delivering specific financial results. I know I've been engaged in, in many different teams, both as a team member uh, and as a leader of the team, whether it's been in education, whether it's been in industry, and in some cases uh, in volunteer, and again, faith-based organizations. Uh, Thank you for for sharing that. That's helpful uh, helpful to me to get to know some of you in the, in this format. Uh, well, let's look at an overview of of what we're going to focus on uh, in this uh, in this webinar session. We're going to look first at the significance and the importance of the team leader, and then we're going to look at essential functions of the team leader, and then we'll move into uh, a systematic process that I'd like to share with you that a team leader can use to lead their teams to accomplish the goal. And then we'll move into uh, some next steps and uh, where to go and what we can do with all, all of this. Uh, so let's begin with the significance and the importance of a team leader. And there's a lot, a lot of things that team leaders do, a lot of responsibilities. Uh, in terms of framing our session today, just wanna focus on the fact that it is the team leader's responsibility to lead the team to accomplish the goal. And I know that that you know might sound simplistic, but I think sometimes uh, sometimes we get caught up in teamwork ourselves and and get caught up in in all of the other activities that we need to do. But it's really critical uh, that the team leader accepts the responsibility to accomplish the goal as a team. It's also I, I believe the team leader's responsibility to to inspire the team. Uh, to be the one that uh, provides um, inspiration, and along with that is motivation, uh, to motivate uh, team members, uh, sometimes to even keep our own selves motivated so that we can, we can stay focused and accomplish what needs done. And, uh, and the, the final thing that, that I listed is uh, it's important uh, that the team leader takes the responsibility of engaging the team and engaging the team members so that everyone's engaged, contributes, uh, takes their part, completes their, their role, and facilitates uh, the, the accomplishment of the goal of the team. So to do that, uh, some of the functions, and I know leading teams encompasses many, many functions, but the ones that I'd like to specifically uh, highlight is it's really the team leader's responsibility to develop a strategy for success uh, for the team. Uh, as much as possible, the team leader uh, should be involved in selecting the members of the team. And I know that that's not always possible. Sometimes the team has been selected by someone else uh, another uh, area, but it's important uh, as much as possible that that the team leader has input uh, in in arranging and, and formulating the teams. Uh, and then the next step, team member team leaders would uh, help team members to be assigned work assignments. Uh, what is everyone going to, going to do? What is everyone going to uh, accomplish? And then with that, then would be moving into what activities are going to be utilized. Uh, for the team members to complete their work assignments. Uh, as the team is, is completing uh, the, the work that they're doing, 
the team leader should be monitoring the team progress uh, as much as possible. And again, sometimes that's difficult, get involved in a lot of different activities. And how many of you ever felt like you're going all kinds of different directions and you could be leading multiple teams uh, simultaneously, but it's really essential that uh, an essential function is for the team leader to, to monitor where everyone is at within, within the teamwork that they're doing. And then when, when the team has finished to check the team results and, and to make sure that the, the results have been completed or other activities, other activities need, need to be assigned to complete uh, to, so that the team members can complete their work assignments. So, so just a few things on, on, on the functions of, of a leader. Uh, one of the things that I really want to stress is that it's, it's so critical that the team leader has a systematic process for the team to help the team accomplish their goal. And that's what I want to focus on in the remainder part of the, this webinar is that uh, the team leader uh, utilizes a process so that, uh, as you can look in, in, in the picture, to kind of bridge the, the gap and put the puzzle pieces together from where everyone's at to uh, achieving success rather than just hoping that everyone gets where they need to, to be and, and hoping that success uh, is achieved. So I'd like to begin uh, with the statement that uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Now we're not saying teamwork makes dream work. Hopefully that's the case, but I re really wanna, John Maxwell I think said it well, teamwork makes the dream work. And, and where we start with that is it's important for the team uh, and the team leader to have a goal, to have a specific goal as to what the team is to do. Why has the team been pulled together? Um, even if your teamwork involves a monthly meeting, it's still important to have a goal for that meeting. It's important that, 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 uh, that the question is answered, what's the goal of this team? What do we want to accomplish? Uh, you know, some folks use what's called SMART goals uh, to do this, which is a whole nother webinar and a whole nother, uh, whole nother time. Uh, but it, but uh, regardless of, of, of the way that you do this, uh, it's important to have a goal and, and for everyone to know what that goal is. What are we working uh, to accomplish? And then the team leader will continually uh, help the team to focus on the goal. Uh, it, have you ever felt like we're sidetracked? We start on one thing and all at once something else comes up and we have to go work, focus on that. Something else comes up and, and the next thing you know, you're sidetracked and all these, all these other things that are important and need done. Uh, and sometimes for the team leader, that's where you're at. You, you get involved in so many other things and, and yet it's, it's critical that there's a continual focus on, on the goal of the team and I would add to that, then it's essential to have a plan in order to accomplish the goal. And, and, and uh, the plan that I would like to share with you today and the strategy is, is one that I developed that's been very helpful to me and many others that I've worked with is I call it the triple R mod, the triple R plus, excuse me, the triple R plus uh, model to accomplish the goal. And uh, it just the triple R helps me to just keep these three areas in mind, responsibility, resources, and results. And uh, we'll talk about the plus a little later uh, in the session. But let's begin with, with the first R. It's essential that the team leader make sure that each team member, including the team leader, including your own self, knows what your responsibility is that you have a designated responsibility um, and everyone's aware of, of your responsibility. Everyone can essentially be aware of, of the responsibility of, of, of others. But when you assign responsibilities as, as a team leader, you're looking at what each team member will accomplish. So you think of a, of a puzzle, uh, sometimes folks are working on different things, but at some point you have to pull that puzzle back together again and what's what's everyone going to individually do uh, I, I like the, the the word response uh, hyphen ability response ability is it's hard to ask someone to respond to something that they're not able to do that they 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 don't uh, have the the knowledge they don't have the skill set 
they don't don't have uh, essentially what the ability to to respond and complete their their what they're required to do. Uh, so when you're thinking about re, re, uh, assigning team members and having team members do, think about what's the their ability to respond to the to the work job to the to the uh, a contribution they will make uh, to the team. And I also like to add to that. Uh, I think it's it's nice when, when the skill set can match the will set, when you can match folks with what they like to do and what they want to do with the skills that they have in order to be able to to achieve that. And, and maybe you can think of times that when you've worked on a team yourself that you're you were asked to do something that you didn't have the skill set for uh, and other times you were asked to do something that you didn't really have the will set for that you that wasn't something you were interested in you might have had the skills to do it uh, but maybe the interest wasn't there and uh, and i think we all realize that there are times that sometimes you have to you have to do what's required uh, but even so as as much as each team member you can match uh what you're what they're required to do uh with their desire and align those two, the team member is gonna move significantly forward uh, in accomplishing the goal. So uh, the, the first R is responsibility. Uh, everyone has a responsibility. Everybody knows what they're to accomplish. Everyone is able to accomplish that. And, and, uh, and if you can align that with, with someone's desire and, and uh, what they like to do, it, it's gonna be much more beneficial. So first R, responsibility. The second R is resources. Uh, as a team leader, one of your responsibilities is to make sure that the team members have what they need to do in order to accomplish their work. Uh, that, uh, that do they have the resources? Do they have the financial resources that they need? Do they have the time? Sometimes it's it's not financial or time, but it's access to, to those to other people, access to what they need. Uh, back to the to the to the previous uh, section in resources or in responsibility, if they have the will but not the not the ability because they haven't had the proper training, one of the re the resources might be to to be able to provide the professional development that's needed so that they can accomplish uh, what they have to do. Uh, many other resources, and again, you can think of that in terms of, of uh, your own teams um, and the teams that you lead. But once folks have a responsibility, it's the team, team leader's responsibility to equip the team members and make sure they have the resources that are needed to uh, accomplish uh, the goals. Uh, maybe you can think of time, for example, have you been ever asked to do something that you didn't have what you needed to accomplish that, or that you had to spend an excessive amount of time trying to find the resources, trying to find the contacts, trying to trying to get in touch with, with the people they need, or even just trying to find the time uh, within the schedule to do that. Uh, um, team leader uh, not only uh, helps people and assigns uh, responsibilities, the team leader also enables and, and does their best to uh, find the resources that helps each team member be effective. And then the third R is it's critical that the team leader checks the results, uh, holds team members accountable uh, for what you ask them to do, for what they are, they are expected to do. Uh, you know, looks at the team and make sure that the team leader, uh, the team uh, itself has accomplished and achieved the goals. Uh, you know, how often have, have, have teams set out to do something, they know what they're supposed to do, they do it, they 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 get it accomplished and or it seems that it's been accomplished and then they move on to something else you move on to to a, a, another another job and another uh, activity uh, but i believe that uh, that when you when you hold people you know accountable um in, in in a you know gentle but firm way if i can say it that way you, you we need to to hold people to to be able to report back for example 
uh, report back what they're doing, report back what they've accomplished, uh, provide documentation. Uh, you know, if you ask somebody to do something, uh, then then check and make sure uh, that, that it's been done. Uh, same way with, with what you do, um, your results, uh, making sure that, that everybody has a responsibility, making sure that uh, everybody has, has achieved their part uh, of, of the teamwork uh, so that the team can effectively uh, be able to uh, achieve the goal. And then the last one that, that uh, we talked about, I want to want to move towards is the plus. Uh, and and I, I call the plus recognition. Uh, it would be the fourth R, but uh, really I call it three R's and then the plus is recognition. It's extremely important uh, for the team leader to recognize the team members for what they've done, for give credit where credit is due, uh, being willing to say thank you. Uh, and, and I always say in, in, in the recognition piece is finding ways to recognize people in, in a way that in a way that um, that they would like to be recognized different people like recognition in different way not not everybody not everybody likes to be called up front and 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 be called out and be recognized for what they do uh, some people love that some people just just enjoy just being just saying thank you um, and thanking them. Uh, but again, I think in the, in the busy world that we live in, we so often accomplish uh, what we do, uh, and then we, we get moving on to the next thing, and, and we, we fail uh, to recognize, uh, you know, we fail to recognize uh, folks for the, what they've contributed to the team, what they've achieved, the difference that they've made. Uh, along with that is just re recognizing the work of the entire team and giving recognition uh, for the team, uh, being cautious that uh, you know, sometimes as a team leader, we're the ones that's on the forefront and, and folks see us. And, and sometimes it's, it's, if we're not careful, uh, someone can, can uh, talk about what we've accomplished and what we've accomplished has actually been what we as the team has accomplished. And uh, uh, when, we, when we take credit and we sometimes uh, don't recognize others, uh, it really, the next time we move on to the next work that we do and the next goal that we have, sometimes it's hard to get people engaged. Uh, so giving recognition, it's the plus that I think really, really is, is uh, uh, the, the icing on the cake to the team uh, to give a big thank you, regardless of, of whether it's been something small or, or something large. Uh, I mean, another way to think about this is let's say your teamwork is, is just a monthly meeting is sometimes you know making sure at the end of the meeting that that you thank everyone for coming the, to the meeting and taking time um, and and being present uh, uh, making sure that uh, everyone is recognized uh, so let, let's recap the triple r model uh, that uh, i found quite helpful just for me to be able to, re to remember the the different areas making sure as the team leader that everybody on the team has a responsibility, uh, knows their, what they are to do to contribute to the team. Uh, the second component of that is then making sure everyone has the resources that they need, whatever those resources are, so that they can accomplish their goal, um, sometimes financial, sometimes time, sometimes connections with people you know, uh, sometimes it's just just being able to provide additional training and professional development so that they can can uh, achieve that. Uh, and then the uh, and then the team leader needs to check the results. Uh, make sure that uh, you're checking the results because it's really hard to, to give recognition, which is that uh, that plus uh, uh, the fourth component. It's really hard to give recognition. Uh, without knowing what people have individually done. And I know it's, you know, sometimes we can, we can just basically thank people for their contribution. Um, but how many of you felt uh, that if someone not, not just thanks you for contributing to the team, but actually acknowledges what you've done uh, in a very, very real way by, by, by stating how you've contributed to the success of the team, um, focusing that recognition uh, on, uh, on individual folks um, and also on the team as a whole. So where do you go with, with this? Uh, you, you, you have a, you, you, we talked about a, a strategy. Uh, 
but it's really, uh, I think it's essential for the team leader. Uh, so, so from this webinar to move forward and be willing to accept responsibility for leading the team. Uh, and, and that might be a, a, a large work job, or maybe your responsibility is to lead the team in a monthly meeting, but accept responsibility for that, accept responsibility for your role of, of working with the team, of leading the team, of making sure that the team has what they need and making sure that they accomplish the goal. Uh, it's uh, the team leader's uh, responsibility. And one of the next steps is think about the, the, the teams that you lead uh, and, uh, and move from, from a dream to a goal. You know, in essence, uh, what's this team to accomplish? Uh, what, what are they to actually achieve? Uh, what's that uh, dream look like? But then make sure that becomes a goal. Make sure it becomes something uh, in, in, in paper on, that's practical, that can be measured, that can be achieved, that you have the time to do it. Uh, and then once you have that goal, utilize a strategy for success. Uh, I've shared the triple R model, uh, triple R plus model to accomplish the goal as a strategy. Feel free to use this. Feel free to adapt it uh, in some other form. Uh, and even if you don't use it, it's, it's just critical for the team leader to, to have a strategy that, that helps the team to be, be successful. So your next steps and my next steps is to look at everything that we do, whether we're working with a, a team, I would say, you know, two people are still a team. And if there's two of us working together, make sure that, um, that uh, you, you, if you're leading that, uh, make sure that you have the strategy. Uh, I would also say uh, a next step essentially would be is if you're working on a team and you're not the team leader, is if you are a member of the team, you can also apply this to make sure that you know exactly as a team member, you know exactly what your responsibility is. Make sure that, uh, that uh, whoever's leading the team, that you engage them in providing what you need to do to, to accomplish uh, your part of the team. Uh, and then if they don't ask you for the results, be willing to share results, Sh share with, with the team leader. Uh, here's what I've accomplished. Take the, the responsibility as a team member. So I think this works both ways. It's, it's, not just, it's not just what the team leader does, but even if you're working on a team and you're a team member, uh, you can still make sure that you have what you need to, to do to be able to accomplish uh, your part, part of the work. Uh, um, have you ever been on a team as a team member and, and, and you, you felt like you knew what you were to do, but you really didn't quite think uh, you had the resources to do it. Uh, and, and sometimes it's easy just to go try and do our best, uh, but you can turn this uh, in another direction by going back to the whoever's leading the team and saying, here's what I need. Uh, here's what I need so that I can do what you've asked me to do. Um, and then, uh, so this strategy can be used not just by team leaders, but it's a good strategy for team members as well uh, to follow. Um, so in summary, uh, we've looked at the significance and the importance of, of the team leader. Uh, we've looked at some essential functions of the, of the team leader. Uh, we've uh, focused on, on the triple R plus model to accomplish the goal as a uh, systematic process that the team leader can use to uh, help their team accomplish the goal. And then we close with next steps and the importance of, of moving forward and taking action uh, as, your, as the leader of your team to make sure that you have a goal, that everyone's engaged, that everyone works uh, together, uh, and, and that, uh, that uh, everyone uh, provides input uh, to the best of their ability, and that in the end, the goal is accomplished and that you're able to uh, be able to, to document uh, the goal is completed and uh, you're ready to move on to the next goal or one of the other goals that you're simultaneously working on. Uh, but, uh, but moving forward and taking ownership um, and uh, taking responsibility as the leader and leading your team. So, so thank you very much. I appreciate uh, being able to, to join with you. This has been helpful to me as, as I've uh, been engaged in, in leading teams and, and I hope it's been helpful to you, but let me just uh, open it up uh, to uh, uh, questions in the, that you can share. Uh, any specific questions that you would like to ask that I could uh, help with? 
Thank you, Dr. Fleck. Uh, so we have a couple of questions here um, and I'll start with the first one. So uh, the first question is, what are some of the tools and technology that you use to support you in leading a team? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, a lot of different to to tools and technology. Um, obviously, um, you know, we, we if uh, I try to use what works best with the team, you know, some of the things that I do, we we use uh, Teams as a, as a way to engage. Uh, other technology things that I use uh, is is Zoom. Uh, that we do some some Zoom meetings, of course, face to face meetings, and. Uh, um, of course, some of it uh, is shared electronically. Uh, anything I can share with folks, I always try to make sure that folks have the agenda, have the minutes uh, when I'm leading a team. Uh, that uh, that if even if it's just a even if a monthly meeting, that everyone has an agenda ahead of time. They know what we're going to cover, uh, and and they receive that electronically. I also bring copies, uh, paper copies, to our face to face meetings. Uh, uh, so that folks have it. But I really try to, again, think about the team members, uh, think about who's on the team and try to find ways that's going to engage them the best and, and utilize the resources that, that's going to be helpful to them. And sometimes as a team leader, we have to learn how to do things different ways so that we can engage different people. Uh, but uh, but it really focus on on any any avenue that I that I have. Uh, but I I really believe, uh, in essence, making sure that folks have the information that they need uh, is, is essential. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, how do you deal with varying levels of engagement, skills, and communication among team members to accomplish the collective goals? Okay. So can you repeat that again, Sam? Uh, yes. So the question is, how do you deal with varying levels of engagement, skills and communication among team members to accomplish the collective goal. Okay, so so dealing with with, with uh, different different people and how do we do that? Uh, really, one of the things I say, and, and there's a whole nother, I'm sure, a webinar on communication is learning how to communicate and learning how to connect with people, because I find it's really hard to engage people if you don't connect with them. And, and uh, um, it's important to know people, to know to know their strengths, to know their their abilities, and and, and I found that if you can engage people in in remember back in the slide I said make sure that uh, you know responsibility, make sure that they they are able to respond and do what you want them to do to assign somebody something or or to give somebody uh, something that that they don't have the. The, the ability, uh, and I don't say that negatively, you know, so if they're, if they're not able to do it, uh, provide the professional development resources that they need to be able to learn what they have to do, uh, but also getting to know people and knowing their interests. Uh, and, and I know this is not always possible, uh, but as much as is feasible, uh, connect people with what they like to do, uh, with, with uh, what's in their wheelhouse, with what their interests are. Uh, and then also is, uh, I think it's helpful is to continually monitor that, uh, is, uh, you know, not to micromanage the team, but to be able to keep tabs on what folks, uh, and, and there's a, a line there between, you know, between keeping tabs on people and micromanaging them. Uh, but, uh, but you, so you're not, not micromanaging, but you're, but you're staying connected and uh, getting the, you know, possibly reports back. And, and then uh, if you sense that somebody is, is struggling with uh, inspiration or motivation, what can you do to assist them? What, what can you do to support them? Uh, and uh, again, that, that really boils down to knowing people uh, and being able to communicate with them. So there's lots of offshoots all, off of this webinar to many other things that, that uh, help to motivate people, help to engage people uh, and, and your own communication, but staying connected. Uh, and in and, and today's day and age uh, with uh, not being as face-to-face -face as many times as we are, we got to go back to the technology. What kind of technology can we use to, to uh, connect with folks? So if, I hope that answered the question. If there's a, another question off of that, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Dr. Fleck. So a similar question is, how do you manage conflict and different personalities in a team while still putting in high team performance and meeting deliverables? 
Okay. Um, that is definitely a, a difficult one, and we could we could probably spend another hour on on managing conflict. But uh, let me just uh, uh, kind of bring, bring a focus back to uh, I really believe that that if you looking at a at a strategy like the the triple R plus or or a similar strategy where you um, focus people on their responsibility. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I think the problem is we, we, we assign a team the whole responsibility of making sure that their, their, the goal is accomplished. And then people start, step, start stepping on, on each other's toes. So I, I guess what I'm saying is as much as possible, try not to try to do things that, that minimize conflict to begin with. Uh, making sure that, that people are working in their focused area and, and they know what they're to do and they have the resources th that they need to do it. Now, as the team works, uh, again, if, if as a team leader, you notice that the conflict, try to deal with that uh, up front and, and uh, right away. Uh, don't, don't let things, uh, you know, if, if you sense that, that folks are struggling working together, is address that. Uh, whether it's uh, individual meetings uh, uh, first and then, and then a meeting together uh, with those are. But, but uh, my first line of defense, I always say, is, is offense, is making sure everybody's doing what they need to do. They're doing, uh, they're focusing on, on their area rather than just throwing it out to the whole team and say, hey, let's get this done. Uh, and, and all at once a couple people start doing certain things and a couple other people don't like what they're, that they don't like what's left to be done because they think they're not getting to do, do what they like to do. And, uh, uh, and I just, a lot of times see conflict develop um, because of a lack of structure. And so I would say uh, initiate uh, structure, engage everyone, and 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 communicate and stay connected with everyone. And then if if conflict does occur, uh, the the you know that's the it needs to be dealt with. It needs to be dealt with constructively. And um, um, and I actually focus on on um, you know other strategies uh, that uh, would be in, in another webinar. But but take it head on uh, and and. and manage it up front. Uh, don't let it continue because I find it just keeps getting uh, worse and worse uh, that it that it doesn't go away. Um, just just becomes more problematic. So so deal with that up front. Thank you. Uh, this is an interesting question. So uh, the, the person asks, uh, is competition in a team good or bad? How should a team leader manage competition within a team? Okay, I would say um, it's the best of times and it's the worst of times. Can we go back to that, that quote with, with competition that I believe competition can be good. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, people rise to, to a, a level of, of competition. On the other side of that, I think sometimes competition can create conflict. Uh, and uh, so, I, I, again, I really believe it, it goes back to being able to know who's on your team, know whether they, they thrive on competition or whether um, or, or whether the, you know, whether they thrive on competition or whether whether competition creates conflict uh, and uh, and use competition. Um, as something that motivates people, uh, but don't use it uh, if, if you know that it's that you're going to create conflict. Again, I think that's where you where we create our own, you know, our own conflict in the team because people are competing against one another. Um, but there's other times where you, where if everybody has a responsibility, let's say, for example, and, and you give a timeline and, and say, let's see who can get this done first. Uh, you've created competition. Uh, and if folks are are okay with that, um, um, it's helpful. Um, but but if it but if it's going to create conflict, I would say you know be cautious of of the way you use it. But it can be good if it's uh, if it's part of your strategy and if it's managed correctly. Uh, otherwise, it can really really be difficult to to do uh, and can cause a lot of problems. Thank you. Uh, another question is. Um... Performance management can be sometimes subjective or a point of contention in a team. How do you communicate and enforce responsibility and performance deliverables so everyone is on track to fulfill the team objectives? 
Okay. Good, very good question. And, and uh, I think a, a lot of that uh, certainly has uh, to do with your role as, as the team leader. Uh, and uh, if, if uh, and again, I, I still never advocate um, uh, achievement by power uh, because I've learned so much in, in leading volunteer organizations where really uh, everybody volunteers uh, and, and uh, learning how to, how to work with folks and that has really been helpful uh, in, in being able to manage teams that, uh, that are assigned and, and they're part of our work responsibilities. But either way, people still are volunteering uh, their, their effort. And, and some will do that at a higher level than others and, and some are uh, at a lesser level. But I think it really, uh, really, it really hinges on making sure that responsibilities are clear cut and expectations are, are, are shared. Uh, a lot. And then of course, make sure people have the resources that they need to do that. Uh, but I think if, if you focus people on, here's what you're to do, uh, and, and everybody has, a, has a, a responsibility and everybody has an assignment, everybody has what they need, uh, it, it helps uh, eliminate that, uh, that folks, uh, well, they were supposed to do it or that was somebody else. Uh, because once you designate that, uh, then, then you hold that individual person accountable. Um, and, and sometimes that's accountable through your, um, through your professional uh, organization. Sometimes it's just just more more accountable with volunteers on on when you check with folks what they do, uh, holding them uh, to to a level of accountability that uh, that matches uh, what they do. Uh, some folks use action plans, for example, an action plan for a whole team. Uh, others have have an action plan for individual team members. Here's what you're to do. Here's your re resources. Here's the results, um, and um, and then. And then checking on that. So I think yes, people do. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that people don't work together; that they should work together. Uh, but if they're working together, uh, helping to accomplish goals that they know they're responsible for, and a lot of times they have to work together so that each uh, each person can accomplish the goal. Uh, but I, I think it just uh, confusion results when everybody's trying to do something and people aren't aren't sure exactly. Uh, that they, they, they know what the goal of the team is, but they don't know exactly what their goal is. So I think being able to make sure the, the, the responsibility uh, matches uh, individual folks is essential. Thank you. Uh, another question is, uh, I manage teams from different cultures, from different geolocations, cross-functional fun cross teams. How can I manage such a team effectively? What are some of the ways that you suggest to manage a cross-functional team and a team across geolocation and different cultures? And how can I do that effectively? Okay, well, well let me start by saying um, one of the things, and, and it's certainly been, been a, a learning curve for me and, it, and it's a learning curve every day is every time we work with folks is learning who they are uh, if, if they're coming from, from different uh, cultures, you know, sometimes we can, we can have people from the same culture on, on, on our same team, and they're still coming from different viewpoints, uh, different, uh, uh, different places in life. So the first thing I would say is, is uh, it is the responsibility of the team uh, leader to, to get to know your folks, uh, to get to know your culture. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that's easy. Uh, uh, it's certainly another level of responsibility, uh, but I think that um, uh, until we can, you know, uh, effectively, uh, effectively understand and then get to understand people, uh, who they are and where they're from. For example, um, wasn't too long ago, I, I led a team that had folks in another country, and uh, it wasn't until it hit me that their time was 13 hours difference. Uh, so my, my normal uh, working time of trying to get to get folks together at uh, you know, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning uh, meant that they were talking about 12 midnight, one o'clock the, the, the next day. And uh, so uh, 
I, I learned that, yeah, yeah, okay, fun, you know, look at what they do. And sometimes, sometimes we as the team, you know, we, we share that. We share who's on the team, uh, share with others uh, when, you've got, um, when you've got a variety of folks on the team is maybe do some kind of, uh, of learning uh, activity to get people to know each other on the team. Uh, but then uh, use, use what, what you have uh, to, to be able to effectively get people to, to be able to, to engage uh, and, and learn their culture, learn what's important to them, uh, share your culture, what's important to you, and then utilize uh, the, the resources that you have. And, and somehow, as, as you know, we're here, it, it, sounds, it sounds simple, but it's not. It, it is very difficult. Uh, but it's a it's a, a responsibility of the team leader to make sure you know your people, uh, find times uh, which might be not as convenient for you, uh, but as convenient for others on the team, uh, and then do your best to to, to keep everybody uh, connected and engaged. Thank you. Um, Isa from Nigeria asks, what is the best leadership advice for a mentor? Best leadership for ad, advice for a mentor. Uh, we could probably finish finish that in about the, the next five hours. But uh, for me, I would say the, the best leadership advice is is uh, for the the mentor to know them their own self, and for the mentor to get to know uh, who they are mentoring. Um, it, it goes back to uh, really uh, knowing who they are, knowing what they like, know, knowing knowing as much about them as, as you can. And then when when you're entering in that uh, that uh, connection, uh, where where you know it, it's more again, it depends whether you're giving advice or you're or you're mentoring. And 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 a good mentor helps people to to um, understand who they are, where they are, what they need to do. And, and I always think sometimes, uh, you know, a mentor is a team leader. I mean, if you think about these, the, this triple R plus model um, is, is make sure that uh, those that are being mentored, the mentee, know, know what they're to do and know how to do it, know where to find the resources. Uh, I also think it's extremely important for a mentor to take time to uh, congratulate, to acknowledge. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, might have been just a very little accomplishment, but sometimes, uh, you know, uh, giving somebody some type of recognition uh, that matches what they like for recognition, um, that, that's going to be very, very helpful. Um, Thank you, Dr. Black. I think we have uh, time for one more question. And um, uh, we have uh, we have a question that asks. Um, so, what is the um, how do I balance the relationship between my team members, but also enforce responsibility and then performance and manage deliverables? Can you repeat that one more time? Yes. Um, how can I manage personal relationships within my team, but at the same time? meet deadlines as well as manage performance of the team. Okay. Um, that, that, it's difficult. I'll acknowledge that up front. That's, that's difficult because, um, but, but it's also essential uh, to get to know people and, and, and understand who they are because uh, personal relationships, uh, uh, things that people have going on in personal lives is, is uh, um, impacts the, their performance. Uh, um, but I also think it, it's, you know, it, it works both ways. It's the team leader's responsibility to be uh, uh, gentle yet firm uh, is to, to acknowledge, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, there's other things going on, uh, but that, that also here's what we need to accomplish. And, and I believe it goes back to the responsibility and the results, uh, uh, having folks know what their responsibility and, and know when the results are due um, and then to know, though, that if so extenuating circumstances come up, uh, that the team leader is, is going to be uh, helpful in finding the resources that people need uh, to be able to, to, uh, 
to successfully help. Uh, yeah, th thank you. Mentors need to listen. That is exactly right. Uh, and and as a as a mentor listens, uh, and I and I think of listening not just in terms of what my ear hears, uh, but listening uh, in terms of what's going on in their lives. Listening to the skill sets that they have that they need, uh, the resources that they need is to be able to to listen. And and in essence, uh, a good team leader. Um, is also a, you know, is, is it leads the team, is also a mentor, is also, you know, fulfills many, many different roles. So uh, I thank you for sharing that. Uh, listening is, is critical, not just with your ears, but listening to body language, listening to what's going on uh, around uh, others, uh, and then you can help uh, and move from there. Thank you, Dr. Fleck. Um, back to you, Jenny. Abby. Thank you, Dr. Flack. It was a pleasure being with you today. On behalf of ODC and WFED program, we hope you think this webinar is helpful. If we did not get to your question, please send us an email or reach out to the presenter directly via email. For a future webinar, we would like to hear your feedback on today's webinar. Please take a survey using the link in the chat box. It takes less than three minutes. Our next webinar is about how remote and hybrid work environment are impacting employee engagement by Dr. Matthew Rob on June 24th, Friday from 12 to 1 p.m. Registration for all events can be found on all of our social media platforms, such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Again, thank you everyone for joining us today, and we will see you next month. Thank you.